Good afternoon, my name is Alistair Bavistock and I am reporting for CGTN America here from Veracruz State and today you find us with Las Patronas. Now you may have heard of these ladies before and we're here in the place where they work. Now Las Patronas are a group of women uh, who have been for more than 20 years have been uh, standing beside the beast which is La Bestia, a train which Central American migrants ride on the top of very perilous, risking their own lives, provide the Central American migrants riding the train with food and water, essential provisions for what is a very dangerous journey from the, the Mexico southern border with Guatemala all the way up to the US border with Texas. And we're going to talk here with Bernarda Romero. She is one of the founding members of Las Patronas, who for more than 20 years have been preparing food and water and provisions every day. And does Bernarda, pues, I'm going to ask. What is the philosophy behind what, what, um, uh, behind what they do? What is the uh, philosophy detrás de su trabajo? Bueno, aquí este, nosotros tenemos un rol de comida todos los días. Cada día le va tocando a una compañera. So every day they are preparing food. Uh -huh. Entonces, este, aquí se hace, se están haciendo 8, 10 o 12 kilos de arroz. Up to 12 kilos of rice a day. Y este, unos 10 o 15 kilos de frijol se hacen a veces porque están subiendo pues 80, 100, 40, 150, 200. So up to 15 kilos of beans every day because they've seen at the moment daily on a daily basis up to 200 migrants on top of these trains riding past at very high speeds. ¿Y por qué empezaron esto? Why did they start this work? ¿Por qué empezamos? Ay, pues es una historia muy grande. Eh, It's a long story. Este, pues nosotros creemos en Dios. They believe in God. Eh, en aquel tiempo subían pocas personas. Eh, fue un día como siete y media de la mañana. One day at seven o'clock in the morning. Eh, un 4 de febrero del año de 1995. In 1995. Eh, cuando yo y mi hermana fuimos a comprar una caja de leche y una bolsa de pan. When she and her sister went to buy bread and milk. Entonces venía el tren, ya no nos dio tiempo a atravesar del otro lado. Entonces te pasó al pie de nosotros, iba lento. Entonces los en los primeros vagones iban como unos cinco o seis personas y nos dijeron que tenían hambre. Nosotros pues dejamos pasar esas personas hasta ya por mitad de medio tren, como era doble, venían como otras ocho personas y nos vuelven a repetir que tenían hambre. No les dimos las cosas hasta el último, ya como a la, ya hasta el último del tren, el último vagón, venían como 10 personas y esas fueron las que nos dijeron, madre, tenemos hambre y fue como entregamos la bolsa de pan y la caja de leche yo y mi hermana también dio su, su bolsa de pan y su caja de leche. So they were walking along and this house where they where they live is right next to the train tracks where this train passes and this first train came along and there were four or five people on the front wagon who said to them please, we are hungry, please pass us these provisions, and they didn't. The another train, another wagon passed, more people on it asking for provisions, nothing still. But the last wagon, they said, mother, we are hungry, please give us these things. And they handed over the bread and milk, and that was that. They came back to the house and they said, this is great work, we are going to continue helping these people. Doña Bernarda, muchísimas gracias. Vamos a... So, muchas gracias. So there you have it. This is one of the original patronas. And we're going to go over here now. This place is also, in the 20 years that they have uh, been, been running this place, it's also become a refuge for Central American migrants. A lot of these, all these guys you see here, todos son de Honduras, verdad? Todos son de Honduras. Everyone here is from Honduras at the moment, which is one of the most, uh, one of the worst affected countries at the moment f uh, in Central America from the violence, and a lot of people are fleeing. And we're going to come now and talk to Frank, who's another Central American migrant, himself from Honduras. And he's been staying here for a while because he's had a, a recent hernia operation. So we're going to talk to Frank about why he chose to leave Honduras and make this journey towards the United States. ¿Por qué elegiste salir de Honduras y uh, empezar ese viaje tan peligroso? Eh, como todos ven, verdad que Honduras ahorita está un poco difícil, verdad, lo que es la política, eh, la delincuencia y falta de empleo. Eso. 
He says, in Honduras at the moment, it's very difficult. The political situation, the violent situation, and there's no work. Y como podemos ver, verdad, la mayoría de todos los migrantes que pasamos acá, casi el 85% somos hondureños, pero es por lo mismo de que cuesta conseguir un empleo, mucha delincuencia, y tantos problemas que pasan en el país. Ya es cosa que todo el mundo lo sabe, ¿no? Saying 85% of all the Central American migrants at the moment currently hail from Honduras. And uh, hasta ahora, I'm going to ask him how his journey so far has been across Mexico. ¿Cómo ha, cómo ha sido el viaje cruzando México hasta ahora? Pues la verdad, verdad, yo no he sufrido como hay otros compañeros, ¿verdad? pero hay unos que sí sufren bastante porque muchas veces te caen del tren, muchas veces los asaltan, muchas veces los secuestran y tantas cosas que pasan en el camino, ¿verdad? Yo he visto aquí cómo podemos ver los compañeros que pasan acá en las villas de que Hay veces que da hasta la lástima, ¿verdad? Porque se sabe que todos venimos del mismo país. Pero yo, la verdad, yo no he sufrido, pero sí, hay personas que sufren bastante. Tal vez no traen dinero y vienen a, a lo que toca, como dice. Wow. Está fuerte. Bueno, muchas gracias, Frankie. Mucha suerte. Good luck. Mucha suerte. So, we're going to take you outside now, away from the kitchen, and we're going to come across to here. Here you have the map of the trains that cross Mexico. So these guys are all coming from Honduras down here. This is Honduras, El Salvador, and Guatemala. These are the three countries which are the big uh, factors in migration. They generally cross into Tapachula, come up to here, and we are currently here in the middle of Veracruz state, where Las Patronas are. This here is Mexico City, right here. There you are, so we're here, and from here, they have to go up, and they generally come up here, which is Tamaulipas state. Here. That's where they generally cross, but it's a very dangerous journey. And just as Frank was saying, that not only is the journey perilous in uh, actually riding the train, because this train is, it's a huge freight train that comes past, you'll see in the video now that we're going to uh, show you, but it's a huge freight train and it's very difficult. It's easy uh, to, to fall off, it's easy to slip off, and uh, these, these migrants have to be riding this thing for 48 to 72 hours just to cross even a quarter of Mexico. So it's a really dangerous journey, very easy to fall asleep, lose concentration, fall off. A lot of people, a lot of migrants have lost limbs and all this sort of stuff. And not only that, but also there's a vast amount of, of, uh, of organized crime here in Mexico, which uh, lives off exploiting these migrants by robbing their money, kidnapping them, and also turning them into gangsters themselves. But, as you can see, here we are at the train tracks, just down here, at the train tracks right here. So it's here that the Patronus will stand. This train will come past at very high speed, and they'll stand here and lob these bags of food and bottles of water up to these migrants. And as you'll see in the video that we're going to show you, it's exactly what happens here. So this is the Patronas, and currently, because of the political situation in the United States, with the immigration uh, becoming a hot political topic, the Patronas are hoping more than ever that their philosophy of helping these migrants, of love and understanding and compassion for these people, will also travel north with the migrants who are with them. I've been Alistair Bavistock for CGTN America. Good afternoon.